Hey there, One Stop Co-op Shop fans, this is Mike, and today we're going to be playing Euphoria, specifically the solo mode that requires the Ignorance is Bliss expansion. So to be really clear, you cannot play solo, at least with the official rules, out of the box with Euphoria. You do need this very inexpensive expansion to play it. For disclosure, as always, in this case, this game was sent to us as a review copy. Now I'm going to go through setup and how to play the game. If you want to skip all of that, use the timestamps in the info description and you can go right to the gameplay. And also I have a separate video with my review of the solo mode, so check that out if you're interested. So this is the main game board. Pretty much everything's going to take place on here. You also have little player boards, but in the solo mode you only need one for you, not really for the AI. And then additionally in the expansion you have this artifact market that uh, you can choose to use or not to use. I'll explain more about that in a moment. So to jump right into setup, you have these three territory stars, or sorry, four, one for each of the regions in the game. And you're going to cover up each of the spaces except for three of them of your choice. And the reason being you always cover up so you only have a number of spaces equal to the number of players. And when you're playing with the Altama in the solo mode, it's you and two enemies. So you have uh, three spaces available. Additionally, you're going to place these little mining meeples on the space matching the number of players. Now, depending on the version of Euphoria you have, you won't have these numbers on here, but stickers come in the expansion. So uh, they used to start all the way at the end, but that wasn't balanced for player count. So now they're having them start on a different space. So with the solo mode, you're starting on the three space for each of the three tunnels. Next, we're going to go to the Allegiance track, which marks the sort of power that each of the four factions in this dystopian world have. We're going to put the marker kind of to the left. Uh, they're going all over the place to uh, the leftmost and not actually on a space yet, but sort of left on this sort of start word. And when they gain their first movement, they'll actually go onto the first true uh, rectangle here. Okay, now I'm going to shuffle all of the artifact cards. And if you're using the market, you're going to deal four face up. If you're not, you just keep them as a deck. So we got some balloons, a book, more balloons, and some glasses. Now we're going to randomly place six markets. Uh, there's two blank square spaces for uh, each of the regions, except for the uh, top region, the Icarite territory. So we shuffle these up. Now this is important. You get an entire new set of markets and recruits in the expansion. And uh, the ones from the expansion are marked with this little thing here. And you have to choose to either use just the ones from the base game or just the ones from the expansion. So lots of replay there, but uh, you do one or the other. Two of these on each of these spaces, face down, so I don't know what they are. And final uh, quick little step, I put uh, these little unavailable tokens on top of the ends of the tunnels until somebody has dug that far. And that is it for the board. Let's get to the player components. So player setup is super simple. You put uh, your little knowledge marker on the three space, your heart uh, happiness marker on the one space, and then you have 10 stars. And you start with two workers. You can roll those right away. Got a six and a four. And then uh, your other two workers are unavailable at the start of the game. And to set up the Automa, it's incredibly simple. The, you use the black and the white components. Uh, they each get all four of their dice to start and they roll them. And then uh, they've got their own stars. You don't worry about happiness or knowledge or any of that stuff for them. Now, additionally, you randomly assign each Altama an allegiance. So uh, white's going to be with the Wastelanders and black's going to be with the Icarus uh, faction. And last thing for the Altama, I got to build the deck that's going to control their actions. So you'll see in the corner of the Altama cards, you've got colors. The green cards are kind of the easy things that they start with. And you're going to add in more cards later. You take six green cards as their starting deck. We just put those right up there. We do immediately flip one up to give us a little preview. So they're both going to do their Altama action. We'll see what that means in a moment. Or sorry, their Altama territory. And we're going to flip another card to see what their actual action is later in the game. Then we additionally take one black, one pink, one white card, and two more green cards. These are the tougher cards that actually get them stars placed. And we're going to shuffle those into uh, two little decks of five cards. Whenever we go through their initial six green cards, we'll add one deck of five back in. And when they go through their deck again, we'll add the other ones. They're going to get stronger and stronger as the game goes. And one of the very last things we need to do, we get an ethical dilemma card. So here we're going to have a choice to either publish an expose or publish propaganda with uh, glasses or two of any artifact card. And how very interesting to note that glasses happen to be the very first thing on the uh, chart there. So we might do this pretty early. And as a last step, we've got this huge group of recruits. And again, these are the expansion recruits. I would use the non-expansion recruits if I was not uh, playing with the expansion markets. I'm going to draw four of them and I get to choose two. The first thing we can see is their factions. We've got uh, three people of the Euphorian faction and one with the Subterran faction. 
And, you know, I'm realizing I should have actually done this before I gave the Automa their uh, allegiance cards because they can't have the same allegiances as I do. But we got lucky here and didn't draw either of the factions that they have. So each of these guys has a power that I can get. I'm going to start with one of them active and the other one could join me later. So Pedro the Collector, when you pay three different artifacts in an artifact market, you'll see what that means in a moment. You gain one resource and one commodity. John the Amateur Handyman, when you place a worker on a construction site, you may pay three resources instead of the normal resource. Or sorry, three commodities. Ekaterina the Cheater, you can use a book, or no, I think it's a cigar case, as if it were any artifact, and when you do, you gain a commodity. And finally, Doug the Builder, when you place a worker on a construction space, you may lose an available worker to gain the resource of the space instead of paying it. So out of those, Ekaterina seems pretty strong, but there's no cigar cases out. And then Doug and John both have uh, help with building buildings, but I don't really like the idea of losing workers. That's pretty expensive. So I'm going to go with uh, a mixed faction here, which can be good and can be bad. In terms of who I'm going to start with, I think I'm going to start with the Euphorian one because uh, artifact markets, having like three artifacts to play usually comes a little bit later. So I'd rather have uh, John's power with construction to start out. So that means at least in the beginning of the game, I'm going to have Euphorian Faction Allegiance, and we'll see what that means right now. That's it for setup. So the concept for gameplay is very simple. On your turn, you can place one die, or you can pull back as many dice as you want. That's basically your choice. Now, I have a six and a four, but you do additionally have the option, if you've got dice of the same value, of placing more than one die, but each time you do that, you lose one happiness. Move your heart one left on the track, and you can't choose to do that if your uh, happiness is already on one, as mine is now. And then once I place my die, I'm going to draw an Automa card, and the pair of Automa cards are going to determine what action the black and white Automa take, and then we're back to me. So it's just place usually a die or pull them all back. Automa each do something and place a die. Do it again, do it again, back and forth, until one of us has placed all ten of our stars. First one to do that wins. So what are some of the actions you can take? You can go to the commodity markets here, like the aquifer, which will get you a commodity, water in this case for the subterran faction. And you look at the total value of dice in this space, so in this case four, and you'll gain a different effect based on what the total is, and that's everyone's dice in that space. So here I would gain one water and move the subterran faction marker one over which uh, gives it bonuses to people who have recruits of that faction. If it was five to eight, I'd subtract one knowledge. You'll see that's good. And if it's nine or more, I get double the resources. That's awesome. But I also gain a knowledge, which is bad. Another common action you can take is digging in a tunnel. So when you put your die there, note that this has a little uh, kind of dashed space around it. Whereas the uh, commodity place just has a big block. Any number of dice can be there. In a place like this, if someone else comes along, like if White played their die, or even if I wanted to play my own die there, you would just bump them and they re-roll this die so it uh, is available to be used again, which is usually a good thing for the player that that's happening to. So the tunnel, you pay whatever in the gray, so here I would have to pay a water, and then I would gain either a stone resource or an artifact card from the little artifact offer over there. And additionally, I move the miner up one, and if they get to this space, this activates all of the recruits. And that's going to matter for me with Subterran because, remember, once I activate Pedro the Collector, I'm going to gain uh, his power as well as John's power. And then additionally, if I get all the way to the end, then this action space becomes available to get a ton of food with only one die. But uh, you need to have someone of that faction, a recruit of that faction, to be able to do that. All right, almost done with the basic actions. If I go here... This is where uh, that power that my other recruit has. I can discard three artifacts or two of the exact same type. And this is one of the ways to place your stars, and it also moves the uh, faction allegiance token. So in this case, I can put a star on one of the three spaces here, as long as they're not filled, although the automa doesn't care. They can just keep on placing stars there no matter what. Now, speaking of the markets, if you go here, you have to pay the indicated resource. So here it's mostly stone, but it can also be gold or clay. And with three players, remember we have three because of the Automa, once there's three, uh, two dice on there, you flip it over, and both people whose dice, or if one person completed it, they're just them, get to put a star on this uh, market. Now, I don't want to show it to you right now, but when the markets are flipped, they have a negative ability, and that negative ability applies to everyone who's not on the market. Now, for the Automa, they simplify that, but for me, it could give me some negative things that I'd have to deal with until I could, for example, go here or uh, take the action here to place a star, because these unveil actions that let you place stars also. Now, while we're over here, I said that I had uh, two more dice that I could specifically gain. If I spend three of the electricity commodity or three of the water commodity, I gain one of my missing dice, and I also get another bonus, either two happiness or losing two knowledge, depending on which one I do. 
And just about done with our quick tour. Uh, the Icarus territory is mostly the same. The Cloud Mine gets you the Icarus uh, commodity here. And uh, the star thing works the same, but instead of having these markets you construct, instead you have these three always open markets. So you've got the Nimbus Lost, three of any resource type to uh, place a star and move the Icarus uh, faction token. The Breeze Bar, place any commodity plus a Bliss commodity, so you need one of a different type to move the uh, faction and gain two artifact cards. And then same thing to gain any two resources. And except for showing you how the Automa work, that's basically it. So let's jump right into the game. All right, so generally speaking, I want to get the abilities of my Euphorian Recruit activating quickly. So uh, going to the generator to get some resources and also move that is great for me. And I didn't explain this, but as these things move forward, they give bonuses. So once I get past the first two spaces, I'll get an extra electricity or energy from the generator every time I go there. Once I get up here, whenever I go to the Euphorian Tunnel, I get the artifact and the resource instead of choosing one. And then getting up here, just like advancing along the tunnel, will flip a recruit of that type if I have it. If we get all the way to the end, then I get a star placed on all the recruits of that type. That's why it's sometimes good to like get two of the same type and just double up. But uh, here I could also gain the bonuses of, uh, in this case, Subterran as well as Euphorian. So I'm indeed going to start the turn simple. I'll get one energy. And because the total here is four, I'm going to move the Euphorian faction token one. And this does nothing for me, but when it moves one more, I'll be able to gain uh, energy more quickly. All right, now let's show you how the Automa works. So I already have a card here to the right. I'm going to flip a card from the left, and it's going to form a little kind of combo here. So this token only matters when the Automa is running out of dice, which they aren't yet. And uh, as you'll see on this card over here, but you ignore the things on the side and only look at the combined middle, sometimes it will discard artifacts from the offer. And then here it tells what action type they're doing. So in this case, they're both going to their commodity space, and uh, the little Automa symbol here means that they go to the one that matches their faction. So that's what that's always going to mean. They're going to prefer their own faction space. But sometimes it'll say, like, go to a specific faction. Now, in all cases, they're going to place their highest die, except for the single case happening here. When they go to their own commodity space because they want to move their own faction tokens, they're going to place their smallest die. So white's going to go to the Wastelander commodity space with a 1, and Icarus uh, black is going to go to the uh, Icarus space with a 3. So White does the farm, and we don't care at all about gaining resources or knowledge or any of that stuff, but they do move faction uh, tokens whenever it indicates that. So that means their Wastelander space is on one. And then uh, Icarus does the same thing, and they're going to move the Icarus token. They also don't care about commodities. So they're also on one, so only Subterra is lagging behind. And that's it for the Automa turns. They're very fast, just like your turns. Now, you can slide the card over, and you can see a little hint of what might happen, but you don't know what the action will be. So you know Black's going to target their own place, and White's going to try to go to Subterra next turn. All right, so for my next action, I could go to the Generator again. In this case, I would gain a Knowledge, which is bad. You'll see why in a moment when I retrieve my dice, but I would get two more energy, giving me three, enough to get a third die. But instead, I think I'm going to go to the Tunnel... And that'll move this little guy forward. I do have to pay the one energy I got. And now I get either a gold, which would let me build these markets, which are worth stars, or a artifact card. Now, I mentioned earlier, my ethical dilemma just happens to be the artifact card that is the furthest right. And why does that matter? You'll see that this one is free to take. But for these ones, I'd have to spend one commodity. And for this one, I'd have to spend two. And they'll just slide down as they're removed. So I'm going to get these glasses before the AI can potentially get them away from me. All the rest of these cards move down, and we get a teddy bear. And a little note that your maximum number of held artifacts is equal to your happiness. So right now, that is the only artifact I can hold. Now we go back to the Automa. So this is a tunnel or sky lounge action. And because black is the Wastelanders, they're going to prefer to go to the Wastelanders with this Automa thing. So they're going to go to the Wastelander tunnel. And then white is going to go to the commodity space for the Subterrans. So don't forget, every time they'll take the highest die except for the commodity. So Black's going up here to the Sky Lounge, and we ignore the cost, we ignore the resources they would have gained, but they do move up their thing. And this doesn't matter for the bonuses, they can't get any of those, but when they reach the space where people will be revealed, they get to place one star for that, and they place a second star when they get to the end of their faction's track. Meanwhile, White's going to go to the Subterran space. Now, normally they'd be messing me up, because this is a place that I like, because they're going to play their highest die, except when it's their own commodity space. But White's highest die was a four, so they're still going to kind of help me out by moving Subterran up one. So good for them. So there it goes. Everything's at one, except for Icarus. 
All right, this is moving up. And we see that black's gonna do something in my space next turn, and they do have a three or a four, so that could be good for me, potentially. And white's gonna do something at uh, the Wastelander space. So I have an option now. I could use my turn to resolve my ethical dilemma now that I have the glasses, or I could pull all my dice back, because clearly I don't have any to place. In this case, I'm gonna pull them back because white has some low value dice, and I would love for white to get a commodity thing and move my own token forward, since I know they're going to Euphoria next turn. And sorry, I meant black, not white. So here's how taking your workers back. You can take as many as you want. So I could leave like one of them here or here. Like I could, for example, leave them on the tunnel thinking that uh, black might go to the tunnel. But here I'm gonna take them both. And I can either retrieve them in a mean way, which means I have to move my happiness down one, but I get as many back as I want. Now it's okay to do this when you're at one. You can do it even if it would move you to zero. There is no zero space. But if I had gotten some food or some of the bliss drug that's produced by the Icarus faction, then I could discard one of those to instead bring them back in a nice way and move my happiness up two. And don't forget, happiness not only gives me the maximum number of artifacts I can hold, but also lets me use uh, doubles or more than one of a value all in one turn to kind of speed up my play just by spending a happiness. But here I have nothing, so I'm going to bring them back in a cruel way. I'm going to roll my dice. Okay, and I got one to four. And what you do whenever you roll any dice, including when one of your dice is bumped and you have to roll it back onto your board, you total the value of your dice. So here I've got five. You add the value of your current knowledge space, so that's eight, and you compare it to the 16 threshold. If this sum was 16 or higher, uh, this is a dystopia. One of my workers would realize they were living in dystopia. They would uh, break away like uh, Montag in uh, Fahrenheit 451 or whatever, and they would be gone forever. I would lose that worker unless I, uh, you know, hired a new one with three energy or three water. So luckily that didn't happen here. That's more of a danger when you have three or four dice, but we're okay for now. Okay, let's see if we played well. Hopefully Black's going to go to commodity space. Yes, he is. Thank you, sir. And White's going to go to their own commodity space. So remember, black will use the highest die, but it's still a four, so it's still going to help me. And white will use the lowest because it's their own commodity space and they want to keep it low. So that's a one here. So the total is two. Still going to give them a faction movement. And a four here. The total is four. It's going to give me a faction movement. So Wastelanders are up on the second space. And so are the Euphoria faction. And now because I have an active Euphoria recruit, I'm going to get an extra energy every time I go to the generator. Awesome. Now the Automa will also retrieve their dice, and they have to when they run out. But they'll often do it when they have only one die left as well. And they'll do that basically any time they get an action that places a commodity or would uh, move a tunnel. And that's basically the entire green deck, so I can say with almost complete surety they're going to take their dice away in just a moment. But before I worry about that and placing my own dice, I'm going to go ahead and resolve my ethical dilemma. So how it works is if I publish an expose, I draw two new recruit cards and I keep one, so I'll have a third recruit. Now, they will still be inactive, but uh, if I can get them activated, that'll be great and they'll help me out. Or if I want to help the regime, I can just straight up get a star on this card immediately. Now, the recruit could get me a start and forget, and they could give me power and give me extra bonuses, so I think I'm going to go for that. And hopefully I'll either splash into one of the Automa ones or get something that I already have. I mean, I guess I'm going to have to. There's only four types. So that's my action to resolve that. I do have to discard the glasses I got earlier. I draw the top two recruits. Okay, so we've got another Subterran or an Icarus one. Okay, so let's see. At the end of any returns, you may pay one stone to gain an artifact. And here, when you use an artifact market, you may pay two bliss and any artifact instead of the normal cost. So artifact markets, remember, usually require uh, three cards. So here it'll be one card plus two bliss. This is interesting. Since this one is what black is going for, I could get this and just kind of trust that they would advance to the point where it would help me. But this would let me double up on sub tear and then if I go hard for there I could get two stars on them just by uh, doing my own efforts and I also kind of like the ability here uh, okay I'm gonna gonna ignore the Otama probably to my detriment and uh, get a second sub tear waiting for me okay so here comes the Otama so we're gonna do a sub Terran uh, commodity action sorry actually they're both gonna pull back because as I said they're doing the tunnel or the commodity action and they only have one die left now if there was that little symbol we had seen earlier uh, there's one up here in the corner, then they would potentially leave one worker on a space, basically their highest value worker on a space that's going to mess with me. But here there isn't, so they're just pulling all their workers back. Just like I do, they just roll them all. But uh, in this case, they don't care about uh, knowledge or anything, they just get them all back. Next turn, we're looking at a Wastelander action and ooh, a Euphorian action. Although in this case, black has a six, so even if they went to my commodity space, they wouldn't be helping me. So let's see, the question is, do I send one of my dice to the generator and get two energy instead of one because my bonus, or do I start really pumping out the uh, aquifer and the subterran territory to try to get uh, bonuses there? Well, since black is about to go over here and probably mess up my plans, let me go here first, and then I can jump over to subterran in a second. 
Now let's go ahead and place my four. That'll give me two energy because of my recruit bonus plus move my faction token. There that goes. And I have some commodities again. Meanwhile, yeah, so uh, black is going to build a tunnel. Oh, uh, so actually, no, they're going to Icarus. So they're just going to go to the Sky Lounge. And whites is the one who's going into my commodity space. I had that backwards. And they also do get rid of the rightmost artifact. So that's uh, balloons. Okay, so black's going to do its biggest one here. It's going to move its Icarus faction once. And white is not going to their own commodity space. So they're going to totally blow up the uh, energy producing place and give me no faction movement. Icarus goes up one. And now, uh oh, we've gone through the entire deck. And something I didn't mention is you can make the game more difficult by changing up the number of cards and the type of cards in here. But with us going through it, we're going to shuffle in these five cards, and three of these are cards that can actually let them gain stars. So they're going to start uh, making some victory movement in the game. And we are going to start with one card turned up. In this case, bad luck for us. I wanted it to be a card that would have given them victory points, but it was just a green card. And so I could get some more energy. I would actually get three this time, but my knowledge would go up. I could move the Subterran faction. I could even do the uh, Euphorian Tunnel and get some gold to start building markets. I do like the idea of getting gold quickly because uh, if I can get some markets made, then I can actually mess up the AI, as you'll see, and sort of force some of their dice out of contention. So let's do that with one of my two energy. I'll move this up, and this time I'm going to get a gold instead of an artifact. Remember, for one gold, I can jump on one of these uh, market spaces that has the matching resource. All right, and so first we get rid of the uh, artifact in that space. That's another balloon. And let's see, still a green. So uh, black is going to go to the Euphorian commodity space. And white is going to advance their own tunnel. So black joins us in here. Very crowded. Doesn't uh, change anything since they don't actually get resources and commodities. But white goes into the tunnel. So that uh, they won't gain any of that stuff. All they'll do is advance this. But they do gain a victory point. Remember a star when they go there or when it happens on the little uh, faction allegiance track. I'm definitely going to pull both of my dice off. I'll move uh, happiness down, but I can't. And oh, I did get doubles, which is unfortunate that I don't have any happiness or I could actually take a double turn. And the Otama, ah. So you see how this is a black card? That means black will gain a star with this card. The white cards give white a star and then the pink give both of them a star. Those are the worst. So here black is going to place a uh, die on a resource track to start building a market. And white's going to advance their own tunnel again. Now there is this whole like sort of if then little structure for which markets gets built. Right now everything is all equal. So black would have gone to the Icarus ones because that was a symbol they had, but clearly they can't because there are no markets to build up in Icarus. So instead they're just gonna go clockwise around the table and they're gonna try to build a wastelander building. This works out really well for me as you'll see because they always choose the lowest space that's available. And look, that opens up a nice little gold space for the gold that I have to finish this market before white can jump in there. Speaking of white, they are gonna bump their own die. So we'll get to re-roll that to move the uh, tunnel one more space. All right, so before anybody else can jump in there, I'm gonna finish off this market by spending my gold. So here's how this works. These gets rolled back immediately. In my case, six plus three is nine, plus three knowledge, I'm fine. The market gets flipped and slid over to reveal the new action. This is the Bureau of Restricted Tourism. So first of all, it's got an extra uh, cost for this action. So you need a book and one of the clay resources. And if you spend that, you get to move the Wastelander, track one and place a star. But additionally, again, it's got this negative. You aren't don't have a star on the space. You can't place workers if you have two or more on the board. Now I'm placing a star here and black is placing a star here because we're the two ones who are building on that. That means white does not have a star to place. Now they don't care, the Automata doesn't care about the specific abilities on these things. Those would only affect me if I wasn't on there. But it does have an effect. As long as an Automata has a market where they don't have a star, they get flipped to this negative side. And what this means is whenever they uh, roll a six as they're getting a die back, it goes up here instead where it can't be used for anything. So it just kind of forces them to uh, rest more frequently. All right, and back to the Automata. We got another green. So black is going on their own commodity, so they'll use their one. And white's going on the Subterran, so they'll use their six and won't help me at all. So it does put black up here. We're going to move Icarus 1. And Subterran's pretty filled up now. And Icarus uh, chugs along to the lead again in terms of the Allegiance track. Just looking for a moment. White's going to do something with Subterran. Hopefully my tunnel and not just the commodity track. And black's going to do something with Icarus again. Although honestly, they both only have one die left, so there's a good chance they'll just pull their stuff back. But I don't have to pull stuff back. I'm going build crazy. I got another energy. I'm going to move my tunnel again. And let's get another gold to build something else. Okay, and the Otama. Ah, uh, White's going to try to build something now, so they will actually place their die. They're never going to give up the opportunity to do that. Now, if he had been forced to rest because he had no dice left, that would have also wasted this card and cost him a star, which would have been awesome. Okay, now Black will pull back, but because this little symbol is here, they're going to keep their highest value die that is on a commodity space. And specifically, their highest value die on a commodity space that is not their own, so they'll stay here. But they'll pull back these two dice. Sorry, I just realized I got confused. Uh, White's the one that doesn't have a star. 
So black rolls these back, got a six and a three. But white is going to try to place on a market and they are gonna to try to place on a subterrain one. So unfortunately for me, that's right here, which is a resource I don't have any of yet. So let's try to rectify that before uh, they finish that market. I'm gonna go here. I will gain a knowledge, making it more likely I'll lose a worker, but I'll gain two water instead of one. So brings my knowledge up to four. And there we go, about to get some stone. What's the autom I'm gonna do in reaction? Okay, just a green, so that should be okay. So black is gonna go on their own space with their lowest value. Ah, this is terrible. This would actually really been nice. Uh, white would have gone to the Euphorian Tunnel and moved it up for me, which would have been great because it would have actually bumped my die off and let me use it again. But because they have no dice, they're just gonna pull them back and there's no symbols, so they're getting all four back. So if they get any sixes, yes. That's one die less that they'll be able to use, so they'll be rolling again more qu frequently. And Black's going over here, they're gonna move Icarus again. There they go, but again, no bonus until they actually get up here. And I'd love to start getting some stone now, but I can't, I have no workers left, so let's roll them both. And that's a five and an eight, uh, sorry, five and a three equals eight, plus four is 12, still under 16. Oh wait, I forgot about my power, I don't need stone. I can just get three of any commodity and pay it, darn it. Now that I know that, let's try to get something else quickly before they finish things, good, not yet. We'll discard the rightmost artifact, that's a book. And on the left now is gonna be another balloon. All right, so Black's gonna do their own tunnel, which isn't a tunnel, so they're just gonna move their own faction token. And White's gonna block up the Euphoria and a commodity market even more. That's a six here to move their token, and that will just do nothing. Yeah, so I feel silly for not abusing my uh, recruit's power. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna get three energy, and uh, unfortunately go up to five knowledge. That's pretty dangerous. You know, I just realized I removed the uh, white die that was on the uh, market, which you should not do, so I'm gonna put it back. They will stay on a market until it's finished, but I do have three energy now, so as long as they don't finish that market, I'll be able to in a second. Hopefully they won't, hopefully they won't. Awesome. Okay, so black is gonna pull all their dice back because uh, they don't wanna do a commodity action if they only have one die left. And white's gonna do the same because uh, they have all their dice on the board and uh, tunneling they want, don't want to do in that case. So white will get its six back. It will get the one from the generator back, but it won't get uh, the one that's on the market. If they get a six, it'll once again, awesome, really stealing some actions from white right now. Meanwhile, there's no token here and black's not on a market, so they're taking all their dice back and nothing's gonna hurt them yet. All right, so quick, 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 before someone can stop me, I'm gonna use my uh, John the Handyman. Instead of paying the actual cost, I'm just gonna pay a little mixture of things here. I'm gonna keep one of each, and that'll finish this, immediately roll these dice for us. That'll be White's first star and my second. And again, we're ignoring the negative. This would have been, you can only gain artifacts of a kind you don't already have, but here it's just gonna flip Black's card over like White's is flipped and give them that negative with sixes as well. Let's see what I get, because my knowledge is pretty high. Oh, I only have one die right now, so that's a four plus five is a nine. And White does not get a six. So that's two stars out of 10. I'm in the lead, at least for the moment. But, ah, uh, no. Here they go, they're both gonna gain a uh, star right now. First the teddy bear goes away, and then black is gonna go on their own territory, and white is gonna build a building, uh, preferring an Icarus one if they can, although there aren't any. And again, they both have dice, unfortunately. So black goes over here, they get to move their Icarus thing and place a star. Remember, those are finite for me, but not for them. So if there's all these spaces are filled, I can't go there anymore. And one more Icarus movement and they'll get a star here, and that's another one, so black could accelerate pretty quickly here. Meanwhile, White's gonna go for an unconstructed market, and since there's none in Icarus, they're gonna come around to the Wastelanders and take the bottommost spot. So again, I'm shut out unless I use my uh, John the Handyman power again. Although I guess I could just go to a tunnel because it does have a stone at the top. So yeah, let's go in and go to the Subterran Tunnel, get that moving. I could reveal my guys if I get a little bit farther along. If we run one water, I'll get a stone. I know, I need a whole turn to pull back my guys, and then another one to go to the market. Let's see if they race ahead of me. Okay, so Black's gonna go to their own Cloud Mine, and White, ah, is gonna go to the generator, but I'm there, unfortunately, so they're not gonna help me out at all. They're gonna use the two. So the only effect of that, not a good one, is that Black is gonna get another star. Put that right here, and then they're gonna get another one after they move it three more times. But it does give me a shot to place my resources down. Get my dice back, hope I don't roll too high. It's nine plus five, 14, pretty close this time. I do think, yeah, this should just be a green card, I was gonna say. So Black's gonna put their highest die on Subterran, which unfortunately will not move the uh, marker at all. White, meanwhile, is gonna pull back dice because they don't care about uh, getting commodities when they don't have to. Now they, of course, will leave the die on the market, so they're just getting these two back. Hopefully we'll get a six. Oh, I'm sorry, Black should have been like that. Ah, no sixes this time. We've gone through the deck again. Now we're getting to their final deck with three more ways to get stars in here. So they're gonna be getting stars all the time, unfortunately. We always hope the first card they flip is gonna be for a star and they're gonna waste it. Oh, that's perfect. So that means I just cost both of them a star with that little flip there, awesome. All right, before they can recover, let me place my stone there and that'll finish another market out. So White and I get our dice back. 
I did not roll high enough to be worried. This one again won't hurt me, but it says you always gain one commodity less from commodity markets. Oh, that's terrible. And white and I both get to put a star, but clearly I'm happy about that because black is the one who's running away from it with it at the moment. For those keeping track, I have seven stars left to place. Black also has seven and white has eight. All right, let's see what they do. Okay, so black's just gonna get their dice back and all of them because that symbol isn't there and they're not in our market. See if they get any sixes. No, no luck. White, meanwhile, is going to go on my space, uh, my commodity market, and unfortunately they don't have a four or less, so they will uh, be messing me up and taking away the chance of moving my faction token. And I think with my first action, I'm going to get some more resources and also lower my knowledge because I would hate to lose one of my two dice. So I'm going to get me two energy commodities. Gives me three total, enough to use my ability if I need to, and my knowledge goes down to four. All right, let's see what the Automa is doing. Another green. So Black's just going to move the Icarus token up one because they don't have a tunnel. And white's gonna go to their own wasteland or commodity market and move their token up one. So they're two away from a free star. And man, they're super far away. They're not <laughs> really doing much of anything, are they? And well, I guess getting some more uh, gold will be good. So let's do that for now. And that could get me some more water as well. So there we go. I would have revealed anybody here, but I don't have any. I'm only have these subterranean guys waiting. Actually, maybe I should get the cigar box instead, which is at the front of the artifact list, because then if I get a clay, I can move subterranean and get a star. That seems pretty good. Let's do that. I can only hold one artifact, but there it is. And we're gonna add a book. And the Otama is discarding. Okay, well, then we got there just in time. The book went away. Oh, and awesome. Black is going to move the Euphorian Tunnel Forward, which will give me my die back. Love it. And white's going to go to their own space again and move their uh, faction token up. Yeah, this is great. They bump me. This is almost to a uh, three water space that only I can use. And I get a one like that. And let's not forget the Wastelander one moves up one. Looks like White's probably pulling back next turn. We'll see. Right now, to get a clay, I need to have a food to spend, but I don't want to go there with my one and help them advance their own faction token. But I also don't want to bump Black's die and give them uh, less time resting. So I guess I'll just go to the generator and get three more energy. That's nine total. It is going to bump my knowledge up one again, but uh, hopefully we'll be safe. And what are my friends here doing? Oh, White's going to be building a building, so I'm going to try to jump in there real quick. So let's see. Black's going to do... Okay, the... Uh... Icarus Tunnel, which is not a tunnel. He's just going to move his token again. That's only one away from getting a star. Now, White wants to build on a Wastelander market, but there aren't any unbuilt. So that means White's actually going to jump in here. So I should have my gold ready as long as they don't finish it in a second. And then Black's going to jump in over here and move their token. I need to get rid of the rightmost artifact. All right, I got to pull my dice back, and then I can try to finish that building with them. That's a 9 plus 5, 14. I'm okay again. But how okay am I really? Oh, man. Oh wait, yes! <laughs> this is awesome. White was gonna finish the market, but they have no dice. They have to waste their turn pulling it back and that card is wasted for them, I love it. So they're of course gonna leave the uh, one on the market there, but then, ah, no sixes. Okay, meanwhile, Black is also gonna pull their workers back because uh, they won't do a tunnel if they don't have to when they only have one die. They didn't have any on the market, come on for a six. No, none at all. But that was really awesome. Super happy about that result. Okay, so before I lose the chance, I'm going to run in here with my gold. And I'm, of course, using my six because I don't want to <laughs> kill my own workers when I pull them back in a second. So this is coming out. The Together We Work Alone camp. That's White's uh, third star and my fourth. And now Black's really going to have that uh, six penalty for a while. Let's roll our dice. I got a five. Oh, and White got a six. Awesome. That's a die that's taken out for them. All right, so I'm certainly making the markets work to my advantage. Okay, so let's see. Ah, so Black's just going to go to the Breeze Bar again and move their token. That does get them their fifth star, though, unfortunately. Or no, I guess it's their, their fourth star. So yeah, they still have six to go. And then White's going to go to the Icarus Market, which won't matter because it's already as fully advanced as possible. Just to show you what I mean, this is all the way there. So Black's got two stars for it, but any further advancement we won't care about. And because of that, for my action, I'm actually going to jump in here, make my knowledge go back down to four and gain a Bliss. Because look, I can go here with one of my energy and that one bliss, move that, but who cares, and get two resources of my choice. I'll get the clay I need plus something else. All right, and another kind of ho-hum turn. Black's going to go to the Wastelander territory, and their highest die is a four, so they are going to move the uh, thing up. And then White's going to also go there with a one, but it's only going to move once this turn. That is bringing them closer to White gaining another uh, star. And I'm going to jump up to the Sky Lounge. And like I said, get rid of my bliss and one energy. I'm going to gain a clay. You know, I'm actually going to get two because I do see that uh, there's a clay here that goes with the book. I can get stone a little bit more easily. Uh, clay's the only one that will actually help my enemy by me getting it. So yeah, let's just double up on that. All right, so that means I'm about to get my fifth star soon. Oh, man. I wish they didn't have dice, but they do. So yeah, they're both going to go here, immediately constructed. And that's a bummer for me because I'm actually going to have a negative now. 
You can't place workers if you have any on the board with knowledge six. Jeez. I don't at the moment, but I'm about to pull them off, so who knows what I'll roll. Right, so now Black has five stars left to place, so he's ahead of me again. Let me get these guys back immediately. No sixes. Now, by the way, if I go on here, I can place a star on here and not have that negative anymore. So that is a nice little thing I can try to do. Oh, that certainly hurt, but not much I can do about it. Let's hope I don't get a six. Oh, wait, crud. 11. Oh, thank God I lowered my knowledge by one. 11 plus four is 15, just one shy. And I do realize if I place the six second, I'll be pulling them back anyway, so it won't matter that I can't place a worker with a six. So I should be okay. Okay, back to our Atama overlords. Ah, oh, they discarded one of the books I was hoping I might get. Now let's see, black is gonna go on the Icarus space. That'll do nothing because it's already all the way up. White's gonna pull theirs back because they only have one die. And there is no symbol, so they're pulling all of them back. And still no sixes, darn. All right, so the question is, do I go here and place a star or do I start building that last building? There are no more pink cards. They shouldn't be able to surprise me with a double build. So yeah, I think I should be safe to do this. So that's my one artifact and my clay. And I would place the star on here if I didn't already have one, but instead I'm going one of these three spaces. Additionally, sub terror goes up. And man, I've been neglecting this. I don't know if I'm gonna get any bonus from there. Yeah, I do not claim to be playing well, but I am showing you how to play. All right, interesting. Black is gonna pull back his workers, but he's gonna leave one. In this case, it hurts uh, white, so I'm happy about that because his highest value worker is on the Wastelander commodity space. Pull back his other two, hoping for a six. Nope. White, meanwhile, is also gonna go on the commodity space for uh, himself, but the nice thing is that since the four is there, he's not gonna gain any bonus from it. I'm oh, sorry, this should have been the four since they do their lowest for their own. And I do notice there's glasses needed for this and I can get rid of that negative and also put my star there. So let's go back to the tunnel, almost to where I can get three water for one action. I'm gonna spend an energy, and with my single carrying capacity, I'm gonna get the glasses that are on the right there. More teddy bears coming out. All right, we're almost through the deck, another green. And right, so black's gonna go to the cloud mine, won't affect anything. And white, ooh, is gonna advance my subterran tunnel. Thank you, white. Two more times, and I'll actually be able to use the silly uh, recruits that I got. I should've just gotten a star for that card. I always regret that. And well, for me, I'm pulling my dice back. Oops, that was on the four, I think, and that's uh, <laughs> nine, so I'm okay. These guys are, oh yes, advancing my tunnel, thank you. This is great, that's going to uh, finish it off in a second. Meanwhile, black is going to their own space again, but for no effect. So yeah, this is awesome over here, look at this. This goes here, that comes away, and only me, because I'm the only one with Euphoria in person, can go here and get three water for one action. Now note, by the way, I can still go here to get uh, gold or artifact cards, it's just that now I won't uh, move the worker at all. So let's see, I need bliss and water. I'm gonna get the water first. You'll see why in a moment. Put my three down so I don't get hit with that negative ability. I'll get three water in one go. Hooray for tunnels. Meanwhile, the Otama. Oh, there's a black. Oh, he's gonna start building a building. Well, there's only one left, so we know where that's going. Meanwhile, white's gonna pull their dice back because they don't care about building a tunnel if they only have one die. But there is a symbol, but they're actually not in any commodity space except their own. So they're still getting all their dice. Oh, and yes, a six, love that. But black is going here because that's the only market that's unconstructed. So I clearly want to jump in before somebody can uh, race me ahead of that. So yeah, let's see, I do have a clay, but I think I'd rather use my three of a commodity uh, power. And water's easier for me to get, but I also want to move that tunnel. So I'm thinking I'm gonna get uh, two energy and one water to do this. So I'll finish this off. Black and I are neck and neck. We both have four stars left. And here comes this, oh, nice. All right, almost through the deck, then we'll go back through. Black building again. Oh no, if I hadn't bumped him off, then he wouldn't have done it. All right, so now where he prefers to go now is a market that is penalizing him. And if there's more than one of those, he's going to go from uh, where his place is. So we're gonna start at Icarus and wrap around. So it means in this case, he's going right here. That will take away this penalty one, but he still has penalties in other places, so the six uh, penalty doesn't go away. That doesn't mean he only has three more stars to win. And he also moves the Wasteland Tunnel up one with that action. Meanwhile, White is just my buddy, basically, because he's moving my Subterranean Tunnel up, thank you. <laughs> one more and I'll actually be able to use the guys that I've had the whole game and have not done anything with like an idiot. I mean, I was hoping to get a bigger payout here with Bliss, but I'm just gonna get minus one knowledge and one Bliss. If I hadn't had to use that six building the building, I could have gotten two Bliss with this. And that does set me up to get another star in a moment, but I am certainly falling behind. Okay, Black's clearly gonna pull all their workers back, except for, again, the one in the Wastelander territory, so thanks for messing up my uh, enemy. And come on, get a six. No, he's never gotten a six, I think, except for that one time. Meanwhile, white is gonna help the Icarus territory, which doesn't matter at all, so I'm okay with that. All right, let's see if we can get lucky again. I'd love to get another pink card on top. And a green, unfortunately. 
Now, among the many errors possible for Mike this game, probably never getting a third die is one of them, but hey, at least I didn't get uh, any workers lost here. Oh, man, four stars, that's gonna be tough. Let's see. Okay, nothing too bad here. Uh, White's gonna pull back their dice, actually. And again, uh, even though the symbol is here, they don't have any on commodities, so they're not gonna leave any. Look, they got another six, though. Yes! Yeah, it's definitely slowing White down to have that. I wish Black would do the same. Black, meanwhile, is going to go on his own commodity market, the Cloud Mine, but not really do anything with it. All right, meanwhile, here I come. I'm going to spend Glasses, Water, and Bliss. That gets a star, so now I'm on every single market. Good for me. I have three left to place, just like Black. And I get to use move my uh, Euphorian Faction Token one, which, uh, got him terrible. <laughs> I haven't even gotten to the Tunnel bonus yet. Okay, and nothing yet. Looks like White's going to move the Wastelander Tunnel. They did not get a star from it yet, though. And Black's going to mess up the Water Aquifer. Just to show you those in action, White's about to get a, another star, although they're so far behind. All right, so the real question here becomes, where do I get my final three stars? My allegiance is so far behind, I don't really think I'm ever going to get stars for those guys, and even getting one here is pretty unlikely. I don't really care about these abilities. They could get me extra stuff, I guess, so it's sort of useful. Unless there is a book at the front, so if I went to the Subterran Tunnel, I would get both their abilities. And I could get the book. And then, oh, look, a book and a clay. I already have a clay. It would let me get another star. Now, it would move Wastelander up, but hey, I just think I have to. See, so, yeah, that feels like the move. Let's spend our only water. Let's get the book instead of a stone that does put the teddy bear at the front. And let's finally have all of our recruits active. Yay. Just to remind you, if I play three different artifacts on an artifact market, I'd have to have more happiness to do that. I can gain a free commodity and a free resource. And at the end of my turn, I can pay stone, which I don't have, to gain an artifact card. That's not too bad. All right, so anyway, I'm ready to get a uh, third star, or sorry, my second to, my third to last star in a moment, but then I still have to find the other two. So let's see how quickly black can outpace me. All right, the red's getting all their, well, no, black's getting all their dice back. White is going to place that. So here it is on the Wastelander space because of black's die. It's not going to move their token at all. And no icon here, so black's just going to pull all their dice back. Come on, six. Yes. All right, slow them down. I like that, I like that. But speaking of being slowed down. Okay, four and a five, I'm fine. Okay, and, oh, they're getting rid of the teddy bear. And oh no, it's a pink. Let's see, so black is going to place a uh, token on the subterran, but he will move my marker up at least. That'll leave only two stars left for him. White's gonna place a star on a market where she doesn't have one yet. So here's Black's action, places a star there. But then I'll also move this up one, hooray. Meanwhile, White preferred a Euphoria one. Oh, so that's good for me at least. White still has five stars to place, good luck. Look, that does move up the tunnel to be more useful for me. I can get an artifact and a uh, resource. That's right, so it for my turn. Let's tie up Black again. And let's go, where was it? Uh, here we go. We got the book, we got the clay. We get a star in the Wastelander territory, which I, for some reason, only just remembered to cover up <laughs> with the uh, three starting spaces covered. I do have to move the Wastelander one, but that's the least of my worries again. All right, two stars left, black, slow down, that's good. Ah, oh, darn, white would have moved my tunnel. Oh, never mind, it's all the way at the ends. That wouldn't have mattered. All right, so black's gonna go on the cloud mine, one of any effect. White's just getting back all four of their dice. See if they get any sixes. Yes. Let's see, what do I want to do here? Uh, the only artifacts on the right right now is a baseball bat, so I need to get a clay to be able to get a star for that. And I might not actually have any space in a moment. Ooh, but if I go here, I could get a stone, and then I can use my little digger's power to change that into an artifact card, or what, I guess I could just get an artifact card for free anyway. <laughs> yeah, I guess going to the tunnel seems like the best option. Spend my only energy. I'll get a gold, which if I get a, a cigar box would let me get a star, and there is a cigar box up there. And I also get a uh, artifact because of my bonus, but I can't get the cigar box yet. Because I don't have a commodity to discard for it. Yeah, that's okay. I'll get the baseball bat and hopefully be able to use it in a moment. If they discard one more. Ooh, two cigar boxes. All right, time is definitely counting down. Okay, good, but no thing yet for them. So Black's going to pull back all their workers. Looking for a six again. Yes. Slow them down, slow them down. And, okay, White's going to go to the Euphorian Tunnel. Ooh, wait! That's awesome. I was there, which means I get bumped. I'm so happy I did that. So I just got another action before I have to rest. Thank you, White. And so let's see. I think I need some commodities to get the stuff I need. So let's get three water. That's going to be my fastest one. Then from there, I can try to get uh, something. Oh, I can get the uh, cigar box, but first I want to get the clay for the baseball bat. Okay, a possible end is in sight, but am I going to be fast enough? No, Black's getting another star. In case they go somewhere they aren't. I'm going to start in Icarus. I'm going to wrap around to one of these. 
Oh, and it does fill that. Oh, that means that I can't place the thing with the baseball bat. I knew that might happen. It does at least move the subterrain up one. No, that's pretty terrible. That baseball bat is basically a waste now. Well, White's going to build with their tunnel, which will get them finally another star because they've moved up to that revealed space. Oh, man, you know what I'm realizing? If I had taken that Icarite recruit, I would have had his bonuses this whole time and it would have gotten a free star since Black pushed it up so quickly. Darn. Okay, Black is one away from winning. I can't think about that right now. I just got to get my dice back. Okay, one and three. Great. Okay, no whammy, no whammy. Okay. Black's going to build on their own uh, little Skyline spot. Nothing to do in there. White only has one die left, so he's going to pull off. No commodity spaces, even with this symbol to keep them there. No sixes. So let's see, if I can get the cigar box, then I can do that. And then, yeah, the spaces, so I could do it again just by going to the tunnel if I have some energy. Unfortunately, this doesn't move far enough forward for me to get the bonus. That's whatever. I'll just go here. I'll scar to water. Almost opened up that one. I'll pay another water to skip ahead and get the cigar box I need. Get the cigar the baseball bat that's not useful anymore. All right, so I'm set up for my second to last star, and there's another cigar box if I can get another gold for my final star. If black just isn't too fast. No! Well, that is it. Black just got all their cards really early, and I was not able to finish. I was about to get my second to last star, but could not get my tenth. Yes, the show would have gone there. And here's kind of the full board at the end. Uh, certainly some lessons learned there, although they've lessons I've learned before. I seem to always play this badly. I didn't get extra dice. I didn't get happiness to do multiple actions in a turn. I didn't diversify my recruits and let the AI work for me. I mean, if I had gotten that other recruit, because I never really used those guys' power as much, then I would have had one more star, and I would have literally been one turn from winning. But there you go. That's Euphoria. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, this did require the Ignorance is Bliss expansion. Otherwise, you can only play the game multiplayer, but it's fun that way too. Check out the review. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.